Hi everyone, welcome to the solution video for Workout Wednesday 2020 week six where we build a month over month progress report. Before I dive into the rebuild, let's focus on what it is that we're actually trying to build and look at some of the major concepts that I'm gonna cover. So the end goal is a month over month progress report. If you look at the specific requirements, I ask that you basically not hard code dates, but think about a monthly progress and comparing it to the time before it. And the goal here is in our view, we've got subcategories going down the left, and then we've got three different metrics, and then we've got an overall score. So when I look at this, I can see that sales for accessories for November 2019 exceeded sales for accessories in October 2019. It's 167% of what the prior month was. That's great, it gets to be green. Orders also overachieved, units overachieved. Overall, the health of accessories is great. And then if we were to look at something like binders, we can see that sales for binders was less than it was the prior month. So this is gray instead. And so when we go to the overall, we've got 67% or two thirds of the metrics are on track. Now there's a couple things in this challenge that I wanted to focus on specifically that I've had to experience and I thought would be good for you guys to go through. And that is showing multiple metrics that have different comparison goals associated with them and also having unique tool tips for the individual sections. If you look at this, when I hover over a sales metric, it shows the November and October sales. If I hover over orders, it's gonna to change to orders. The units is gonna to change to units. And then probably most strikingly, if I hover over the overall, it's gonna show uh, the on-track percentage and not have anything associated with the dates. So now I'm gonna dive over to Tableau and let's break apart uh, this concept. So like I said, the first thing that we're really trying to do here is to build um, month over month progress. So the easiest way for me to do this in a dynamic fashion, if I were working with live data, it would be to use today's date, the today function. But since we're looking at static data, what I'm gonna do is I'm actually just gonna make a parameter and we we'll call this the current month. And this is just gonna be a simple date parameter. This isn't gonna be exposed to the end user, so I'm not really concerned with what it looks like uh, to start with, but we know that for the sake of the challenge, we're gonna be set to November. And it doesn't really matter what day of November, that's just gonna be our current month. So that's gonna be the start of the build. And then very similar to, I think the last solution I shared with you, I'm gonna build out some conditionals. So I like to build these as Booleans. So I'm gonna do something basic where I take the date truncated to the month of the order date in our case. And I wanna see if that is equal to the date truncated of our current month. That's it, just a simple conditional. If I were to roll the order date to the month, truncate it to the month, is it the same as our current month? That's just a Boolean, true or false. So I'm gonna do that guy. And then we're gonna do another one. We'll call this the prior month. And then all we do here is depending on your preference here. Mine is probably just to go ahead and do date add and take month negative one from our original date. So there's our true false prior month. So now we've got our two different time periods, <clears throat> the current month, which I'll update, and then the prior month. And then it becomes really easy for us to build out our different period metrics. So we've got our current month sales, which is if true false current month, then sales and you can kind of continue on down that fashion. I'll go ahead and build out the prior month sales so we can see what that looks like for the build. And then this is perfect. I mean, again, we're using the parameter right here for the date, but you could easily use a formula or a function to figure out what the current time period is, what the prior one is. So that's gonna be the start of it. Now, the other thing that I will mention is that the idea behind this is to look at the current month and compare it to the prior month and basically determine what percentage it is. And so to say that out loud, it's really the current month divided by the previous month. So when we talk about progress for sales, it's the sum of the current month divided by the prior month sales. And the idea is that if it's over 100%, then we've exceeded or we've achieved the same amount of sales for the, the prior month and so on. 
So that's the foundation, and you'll repeat that for the three different metrics that we've got. Uh, the only unique thing is that one of our metrics is the orders, and that's the distinct count of order IDs. So you'll have to do a little bit of uh, different aggregation when you get there. Basically, when you get to your progress, you won't have to use the sums here because it'll already be aggregated, and you'll just have the current month orders divided by the prior month orders. Okay. So that's the start of it. Let's actually get to like the functional build part because this is the most interesting part about this. So first we have our subcategory and I'm not gonna focus on formatting for this. So we'll just keep it in traditional um, Tableau style. I will make the font a little bit larger for you guys to be able to see it on my big screen here. Okay. <clears throat> So now we've got our subcategory and what I want is I want there to be basically a box that is colored based on the result of this progress status. And in my notes, I specifically say, you know, if it's more than 100%, it's green. If it's less than 100%, then it's gray. So the easy way to achieve this or how I went about it is I actually did a custom diverging and I stepped it as two steps. And I chose two different colors. So I chose a gray and I chose a green use that one and I set what the center should be so basically if the center is at one then it's going to be green and if it's less than one then it's going to be gray and this is how you would think about starting this if you look at what Tableau is doing my marks card is set to a square and then I've got something on color I'm getting pretty close I know I could add on some more labels but where this becomes interesting is I actually need multiple measures on the same sheet to accomplish uh, the, this kind of look and feel. So this works for one set of progress. How do I build out the second one? So let me go ahead and show you how you get around this. And there's a lot of different ways to do this. I am a fan of using the minimum of one. You'll see a lot of times people will have something called spacer in their workbooks, or they'll make a calculated field. They can use max of one, average of one. It doesn't really matter. You can pick zero, but it all does the same thing. So we'll just call this uh, one for now, and let's we'll make it the min of one. And now when I put this on my column shelf, you'll notice a few things happen. One, the first thing that happened, this actually kind of helps us figure out what's going on in the challenge or the solution is that it changed from squares to bars. I can see that in my marks card. But if I actually add on another column here, now this is what I really want and need for this challenge, which is multiple marks cards. That's the key to this is I need multiple marks cards. I know I need multiple marks cards because each of these individual tooltips is different. If each of your tooltips needs to be unique for each column, then you need a different marks card. Same thing if you were to have uh, different visualization types. And I could do that, right? I could make this one a circle instead of a bar. That would be totally cool. You could make separate visualizations all in one sheet with mini marks cards by doing that. For our challenge, this is the path we're gonna go. And this is what we're gonna do to continue to build it. The only other thing that I did is I just fixed my axes. So it looks like, you know, in our final solution, they're squares, they go the entire extended area length of it. To do that, I just set these to one for each of them. And the nice thing about when you have multiple marks cards and you've got these all lined up at the top is they're gonna just expand, they're gonna take up an equivalent amount of space. So I'll go ahead and build on a third one and I'll build on a fourth one. And while the colors won't necessarily be right, you'll see what starts to happen as I build this out further. So once I've got these four different uh, one measures essentially at the top here. I've got the foundation of what it needs to be. The only other trick here would be to hide that header. Now no one knows that these are actually uh, axes with ones. And then the last thing I did to make it look more realistic to sort of that square feel was just to drop some of the formatting. Like let's get rid of all of the, the borders throughout here so that when you look at it, especially if you look at it on a dashboard, and I'll make it a little bit skinnier because that's part of what we did in the challenge. It's going to look like individual squares as opposed to bars. And the more precise we can get about how that looks, the more it's going to look like squares, something maybe people are more familiar with in Excel. Okay. So if you were to continue to build on this, all you would need to do is for each of these individual ones, these individual marks cards, you'd build out other progress metrics for all of those different measures. And maybe I'll even transition over to my completed workbook to show you what that looks like. So you can see that in all of the individuals, I've got the 
uh, progress. I'm calling it Delta Sales in this one on color. And it's the same concept. You can see that over on the right. It's centered at one and it's got the two different colors. And then when we get to the uh, last metric, again, we've got full control over what's going to be here. So I've just built out this total score percentage. And that is a combination of two different calculations. This is a little bit of hard coding. You, I encourage you not to hard code, but we know how many measures there's going to be. So I feel pretty confident dividing this by three. I basically just created score calculations for each of my individual metrics, basically saying if the sales progress or the sales delta, however I'm labeling it, is greater than or equal to one, give it a one. Same thing for the orders. If the distinct count of orders is greater than or equal to one, the, the progress, then give it a one, otherwise it's zero, and the same for quantity. I'll show you what one of those looks like. And then when I just add those up, that's gonna dictate what that numerator is over our different progress indicators. So if it's 100%, then that's three out of three, and then the two out of three, and so on. I like designing like this because there's sort of visual affirmation. Not only can I see that two out of three are lit up, and that two out of three makes sense to be 67%, but I get it two different ways. I get to see the 67%, and I can actually visually see the construction of that 67%. So that's the other kind of major thing here that was sort of a little bit of a, maybe a tough moment to, to overcome. The last thing I want to focus on, well, there's probably two more things. One of the last ones that might have gotten you a little on edge, or maybe you're curious as to how it was built, is the way the tooltips have the months in them. So it says November 2019 and October 2019 sales. And let me actually bring on the parameter here so that we can change this and see that it is indeed dynamic. So if I change to October 1, you'll see that my October 2019 sales is an accurate reflection and my September 2019, the, the tooltip labels essentially update to match. So to be able to accomplish that, I made two more calculated fields and they're called current month and prior month, very similar naming conventions. And this is just a handy little function, set of functions to use. You could probably use um, the year function as well. It's, it's your call on what your preferences are here. You'll definitely want to use date name. Date name is going to return the given date part as a string. So when I say the date name of the month of the current month parameter, that's going to return October as it is now. My parameter is set. And then you can do the same thing with the year. And you're just concatenating those two strings together. You could honestly use the year function for this and then turn it into a string whatever you wanted to do it would come up with the same result so that's how you get that and then the the prior month like literally very identical right all you're going to do is that same logic we did before where you subtracted one month from the current month but you did everything else the same across it and that's great this is pretty simple and this is really nice logic that's going to extend with your dashboard so you won't have to be redoing those things and it's really nice to see because especially in this scenario i'm saying month over month progress report they're really going to need that visual hover over i mean realistically if we were building this out it'd probably in include what month was the current month and the prior month or if it were dynamic today they would know but for the sake of the challenge it's not really there but that's fine so that's how you build out the tooltips and then again because you have individual marks cards for each one of these you can design them to be however you want them to be. They don't have to match. As soon as you go into the individual marks cards, you can decide whatever you want to put in there. And you'll actually see that you no longer want to use the all. I usually don't touch these if I have multiple marks cards because there's no point. I just ignore this because as soon as I customize one marks card, it's going to use the separate marks cards for the rest of them or the tool tips for the rest of them. And then our last marks card is pretty silly because it is still a bar chart. The bar just happens to be white. And that's fine. It's still looks like a bar, it looks like a square. I've also set it to one. And then we've just put text on there. So the only other fun thing on this is the alert dot, which if you look at it, it's just taking that total score percentage. So that final percentage and saying, if it's less than one, let's give it this dot, which is just an ASCII character. Otherwise we'll just leave it empty, not null, but empty. And then when you bring it on as a label, because it's its own calculated field, it can get its own formatted color and it will go nicely next to our percent of our total score percentage calculation. Now, the last finishing steps on this are kind of two things. One is the titles. So 
Um, I'm all about efficiency and quickness here. So if this is a static visualization to some degree and this is what it's going to look like, I'm okay with putting these titles on top as Textbox is in leveraging some of the padding features inside of Tableau to make them look great. I mean, this is perfect. I basically just added a bunch of padding to the left of this and I think I distributed them evenly throughout so that I had confidence as to where they were going to land. If you didn't want to do this, one of uh, our contributors, David, uh, noted that you could actually uh, bring them back on. You could do uh, dual axis. And then if you did that, like Tableau might do something crazy and start looking like that, but you could show the headers of your secondary axis and then you could label those instead. So you'd have to do a little bit more trickery. Basically, you'd need to rename this to be a different measure, but you could realistically turn off that axis there and just uh, turn off, sorry, the axis ticks essentially and the, the markings on it and just use the titling to say that measure or that metric. It's your call on what your preference is. I think that they are both good solutions. And I think David's solution is actually pretty good if you feel like that visualization might need to move over time. If this becomes too much upkeep, then I would absolutely say yes, build it in because as you stretch this out or you uh, move it somewhere else, you're obviously gonna have to deal with the technical debt of carrying this with you. And then the last thing, which I never really talk about, but you should do, I said this is a one sheet challenge, but yes, there's text boxes here and here, is this uh, caption down here. Every workout Wednesday I've done for the past two years, we'll say, I usually, usually utilize the caption to add in my workout Wednesday footer. So I hope you guys are leveraging that caption. There's a lot of good information that you can put in there whenever you leverage the caption. You can put all your parameters, you can put the data source update time, you can put user information in there. And of course you can put your own um, Twitter handle in there. So that becomes a great place to put uh, additional information. Sometimes I'll make custom color legends and put them down there. So those are the main things that I wanted to share for this solution. Hopefully that helps uh, get you moving along in the right direction or there are a couple little tidbits you picked up here and there. Thanks for watching.